guys and welcome to another war game red dragon tutorial video with me Bubble Box. and today we're going to be moving on from the video we looked at the basics of infantry to have a look at them in a little bit more detail some of their roles some of the individual units what they should be used for what they can't be used for look at their weaponry and what the, some of the stats mean and stuff like that now clearly I'm not going to go through all the infantry that would take absolutely forever and would bore me to tears and would probably bore you to tears as well so what we're going to do we're just going to go through the have a look at the American infantry and the Russian infantry as examples and basically everything I say about them will be applicable to all the other types of infantry in the game with just some slight differences that you can just use your common sense with now so we're going to start off having a look at the riflemen and remember from the last tutorial the riflemen have this dark sort of back grey sort of background with these two guys in it now the riflemen squads are really the basic all-purpose infantry squad they come with an assault rifle and in the case of the Americans here this M16 an anti-armored vehicle weapon in this case the M72 law I'm just going to call them anti-tank weapons just for briefness sake of briefness and a machine gun here the M60 now these guys can carry out these riflemen can carry out all infantry roles but they don't really have any specification most are trained up to regular or shock status and they cost from 10 to 30 points and come in squads of 10 or 15 so let's have a look at them well first of all the riflemen so they've got your m16 now the m16 or primary weapon on most infantry is a good basically a basic all-round weapon it can shoot at ground units it can shoot at helicopters it's got a little bit of a decent, you can sort of shoot on the run with it. So it's, this is given by this stabilizer stat. It's reasonably accurate and with an okay sort of fire rate. And this goes for most of the primary weapons in the rifleman squads. They've got a strength of 10. They're very small. Um, they've only got a speed of 20. So they're not too fast when they're outside their vehicle. They can jump from building to building okay, as can all the infantry. Regular trained good stealth so not too easy to see from the enemy um, so they've got this M16 they've also got a machine gun here um, with a longer range than their primary weapon and it can also shoot at helicopters and actually of 30% again and it can suppress as well as can the primary weapon now the thing to note here is the stat thing here and this means that these these guys have to be stationary in order to fire this particular weapon or the cocaine they can be on the move to fire the m16 and then they've got their anti i'm just going to call them anti-tank weapons just for briefness the anti-tank weapons in this case the m72 law and this has got um they have to be static again to fire this weapon and these are all but also heat weapons and all that means is that the ap value will remain the same whether they fire at their full range or whether they're closer to the target it remains exactly the same as opposed to kinetic which is the opposite the closer you get the better hit that you get with kinetic weapons so the accuracy of these laws is 30 percent which isn't brilliant and the ap power is only 13 which isn't brilliant either so they're sort of okay at shooting lightly armored vehicles really light tanks stuff like that if the tanks or the armored vehicles get too close to an urban area with these riflemen inside them now if i pin these riflemen we've also got an upgrade to the riflemen called the riflemen 90s now you can see here they cost five pence more five pence five points more um, they've got exactly the same primary weapon the m16 they've got exactly the same machine gun as well but they have got an upgraded anti-tank weapon here with an increased accuracy from 30 percent up to 45 percent now and a much better ap power from 13 all the way up to 19 now and they've also suppress a little bit better and they've got the same fire rate so basically you're paying five pence for a better anti-armor anti-tank weapon um, so you need to decide you know am i likely to come up against tanks in this particular with this particular deck or in this particular map etc and if you think you're not just take the basic rifleman and if you think you are take the better rifleman now the reason it says 90 here is because you can get these 
depending on the deck choice that you choose. Now, it might sound a bit complicated, but if you choose, for example, a deck that just goes up to 1990, then you'll be able to get these standard riflemen, but you won't be able to get the riflemen 90s. If you choose a deck that goes up to 1995, you'll be able to get the riflemen, but not the riflemen 90s. But if you choose a standard Blue 4 deck or just a standard USA national deck, then you will be able to get both of these types of units. Now, there are some that are called Rifleman 85s. Um, so I think the French are rifle, have Rifleman 85s, and they can be take, brought in to the 1985 deck as well as the 1980s deck. So all of these Rifleman also come with their respective transports. So you've got the Humble Humvee here with its Browning machine gun. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the transports. You can look over them for yourself. I'll just talk about them very briefly. You've got the M113A1, again with a little Browning. Browning. This is amphibious, whereas the, um, I think the um, Humvee is not amphibious, if you wanted an amphibious vehicle. Then you've got this exactly the same, the M113A3, exactly the same. It's just got a different paint job, I think. Um, also cost 10 points so all three of those cost 10 points and then you've got these little dragons with this little uh, guided missile on on top to, that you can fire at uh, armored vehicles it's not the best it's got an accuracy of 35 just three missiles so you're probably gonna have to fire all three off to, to guarantee a kind of a hit really and an AP power of only 10 and then you've got its big brother the super dragon with a better range at 1925 and a much better accuracy of 50 percent and an AP power of 15 now so that one's a little bit better but you are to cost it's going to cost you 20 points for that when you're only bringing in a 10 point rifleman squad so bear that in mind if you want to bring this in as well then you've got your infantry fighting vehicles you've got your bradleys so you've got the bradley tow uh with a decent range and a nice accuracy and an okay ap power of 15 as well and you've also got this bushmaster auto cannon which can shoot choppers and ground units from a range as well then you've got the M2A1 Bradley, which is for 30 points, which is an upgrade of the I to the Ito with a better accuracy and a better AP power of 20. I think it's the same Bushmaster. And then you've got the M2A2 with an upgrade to the... Is that an upgrade to the Toe 2? Yes, an accuracy of 70% now. Very, very good. And a very strong AP power now of 25. Then you've got a couple of choppers. You've got the Huey and the Black Hawk. The Huey... Standard basic infantry carrying chopper with a machine gun. The machine gun can, of course, shoot infantry, but it can't shoot anything else. I don't like these very much. And it's not that fast at 220 kilometers per hour either. And it's only got a strength of four. I would much prefer the Black Hawk. It is 10 points more. But you get a mini gun, which you can use. That's got sort of multiple uses. It can fire at armored trucks and uh, even tanks and things as well. Um, and it's got a very, very high rate, high fire rate, so don't worry too much about that low accuracy of 20. And it can fire on the move. It's got a high speed of 300 k's and a strength of 6. So it can take a hit, and then you could even get it out of the way before it takes another hit if you're really quick on your microing. So that's the rifleman, really, for the uh, USA and for basically most of the Blue 4 ones are very similar, have very similar weapons, and you can apply the same sort of logic to those as well. Now, the upgrade to those really is the US Marines and these are your shock troops so these are better trained so they do more damage per unit and there's a slight difference in their weaponry as well they've got the M16 again but they've got this Colt light machine gun and this, this is what is important this CQC and the CQC stands for close quarters combat and it means they're very very good in urban areas with these light machine guns and <coughs> And you can see they don't have to be static. They can also fire on the move with a stabilizer of 25% with this weapon as well. So nice and effective inside buildings and also whilst running towards those buildings and assaulting those buildings as well. And then you've got the standard anti-tank weapon with a 30% accuracy and an AP power of 13. Then you've got your so-called upgrade in this case. It's the US Marines 90. Same primary, slightly different machine gun, although very similar kind of stats. It fires a little bit faster. I think that's the only real upgrade there. And then you've got a slight upgrade in the um, anti-tank weapon as well. They both do actually cost 25 points. So that's the US Rifleman Squads. 
So moving on to the Russian riflemen, and we're going to start off with the motor strelke, which are kind of equivalent to the USA basic riflemen. And you can see it's the same kind of story. You've got an AK-47 as your primary, does a little bit of everything like the M16 does. You've got your static machine gun here in your third weapon slot. Again, similar to the American model. And then you've got a basic anti-tank weapon with an axia of 40% and an AP power of 14. And that's 20k speed. Again, exactly the same as the American. So these pretty much, I won't go over them in detail, they're pretty much equivalent to the American USA rifleman squads. And they have also got their update, the Motor Strelke 90s, with the same AK-47, the same machine gun and an up slightly upgraded anti-tank weapon for your extra five points with the same accuracy but a much better AP power and a better suppression rate there as well. And of course what differentiates the Russians is their um, vehicles that they bring their units in on and this is also what differentiates all the other factions with their infantry as well of course. So for the motor strelke we start off with the basic BTR here, it's an armoured car. In fact it's got a little uh, machine, oops let's get it up, so it's got a little, uh, well almost an auto cannon with an okay range and can shoot helicopters as well. They've got the BTR 70 which is pretty much, it looks almost exactly, it is exactly the same with a different paint job. You've got the MT, MT LBV which is a really basic slightly armoured armored vehicle with just a little machine gun there the equivalent kind of to the browning for the uh, blue force side then you got this bmp1 which has actually got a rocket launch and anti-tank guided missile on it the malayutka with just an axi of 35 and an AP power of 13 but a decent range this time of 2450 you can bring that in them in that for 15 points and you've got the bmp1p which is pretty similar but with a slightly upgraded sort of conquers missile with an accuracy of 45% and an AP power of uh, 20 so that's slightly upgraded and for five more points and a little cannon there which can shoot units at 1575 meters. Then you've got the BMP-1D which has got this really nice um, grenade launcher on which again really good at stunning and suppressing infantry and it's also got a nice gun so you can stun and suppress the infantry this can fire I believe independently as well even at different targets at the same time and uh, so pretty effective weapon there it does cost 20 of course and it's got a little bit of armor with a three front and uh, two side as well you got the BMP T2 and then you've got the BMPT2D, slight upgrade. I'm not going to go over these in details. And then this one, which is again another slight, in fact, yep, yeah, just a slight upgrade with a slightly better accuracy and um, a better AP power of 23 compared to 20. So you pay a little bit more, you just get the slightly better upgrades. But the nice one here is the one with the uh, grenade launcher here for 20 points, not too bad at all. Then the upgrade to the motor strelke, like going from the uh, rifleman to the Royal Marines, you've got the up here, I would say probably, I wouldn't say, yeah, probably the Mors Mors Morskaya Pekotas, which are your shock troops for the Russians, although the Russians have got two types of shock troops. They've got the Morshak, I can't even pronounce it, I'll just call them the Pekotas. They've got the Pekotas and they've also got these VDVs as well. The Pakotas are 25 points and as you can see, like the Royal Marines, they've got this close quarters combat machine gun here, the standard AK-47 primary weapon and a standard kind of anti-tank weapon as well. But these do come in squads of 15, so they've got quite higher strength and can take quite a lot of damage. And they come again in a variety of vehicles and uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, the Russian and certainly the Red 4 choppers, infantry carrying choppers, are much better armed and often much better armoured as well than the equivalent Blue 4 choppers, although they do cost uh, quite a lot more points to bring in.
And the Russians have also got these VDVs, which are sort of halfway house between the Morskayas and the Motostrelki. They are also shock troops, so they also do more damage per unit than the Motostrelki. And they've got these CQC um, machine guns as well, the AK-47, and a pretty decent anti-tank weapon with an accuracy of 60% and an AP power of 15. But as opposed to the motor, motor, the Pakotas, which cost 5 points more, these have got a strength of 10, whereas of course the, the Pakotas have got a strength of 15. And you can get them in various... Um, various transports i'm not going to go through all the transports you can have a look at those in your own time so that's the russian rifleman infantry and you can see you can see the similarities with the um, usa and indeed with all the other types of rifleman infantry in the game that you'll come across you just have to adapt your thinking between the different factions um, although so there's a lot of similarities and the biggest differences really are the transports a lot of the time now, moving on, and while we're talking about the rifleman infantry, I want to talk about the militia infantry, which are also a type of rifle infantry, although they're classified under the reserve button here, as I show on the top left-hand corner here. Now, these guys are a little bit different to your standard rifleman infantry in that they are classed in their training panel as militia, and it means they're the cheapest and least trained of your infantry units although if you get a pack of these in you get an awful lot of them into the deck and they do have some specific unit uses i tend not to use them but i'm definitely going to give them a go i think give them a chance in a couple of my decks just to see what they can do and what they are capable of but these are a little bit different in that they are all prototypes so to bring in these you either have to have a national deck with, and to bring in the national unit of choice or you have to have a coalition deck um, to get these guys in now the US I believe the Russians and the USA don't actually have any of these reservist militia troops so we've got some for the West Germans and some for the Swedes Swedish Danish North Koreans um, Norwegians, East Germans, French, Brits and the Chinese and the South Koreans have all got these but so not all nations have got them most of them have but as you'll see if I they either cost five or ten points they've all got a strength of 15 so they can take a little bit of damage but let's have a look at the let's have a look at the British ones let's have a look at the territorials they cost five points you can see the weapons are very very limited they've got a very standard primary weapon and it's normally some sort of world war ii upgrade and you can see that although the range is kind of okay the accuracy is not brilliant it's got a stabilizer so you can fire this particular weapon on the move and the rate of fire isn't <clears throat> brilliant either the speed of these guys is very very low at 15 k's as well they can't move very fast at all and they've got a quite basic anti-tank weapon with them as well now there are some that are 10 points for example these korean ones and these have got um oh sorry not the korean ones what am i talking about these uh, let's have a look at these the uh, the Swedish ones and these have actually got a machine gun a close quarters combat machine gun although they've got these Mauser primaries these are actually bolt action ex World War II rifles that have been upgraded a little bit now I have been told these can be quite accurate as long as the unit is still and uh, firing at oncoming units so for example if it's in a building already and there's something assault in the building these can hold out for a reasonable amount of time until help arrives and they have got these close combat uh, machine guns as well and as i said you do get an awful lot of these and they only cost five or ten points so if they only cost five points and you're able to hold a position for a little time you know, it's five points it's nothing really is it even if you had four squads of these it's still only you know 20 points for what 30 60 guys i mean i shouldn't say it really but i guess they can be used as sort of bullet sponges to make the enemy use all their ammo up probably uh get done for saying that but i guess you can use them for that role now other roles you could use these guys for would be 
just putting in buildings to hold buildings or putting in some sort of uh, building a little bit out of the way for example on the flanks or something so you get an early warning if the enemy's coming in that direction or something like that but have a look at these guys they do have their uses you might want to put them in your decks i'm certainly going to give them a try out in a couple of my decks to see what they're good for but bear in mind they are prototype units so can only be bought into national and uh, coalition decks now they also do have transports but these transports are quite basic they haven't i believe got any choppers they're all sort of lightly armored sort of uh, apcs with generally with just a small machine gun or some, something like that in order to be able to protect themselves just while you're dropping them off at their position so that's about it for this today um i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll move on in the next one to have a look at some of the other diff types of infantry i'll try and keep it as brief as possible please do comment like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one